Hello everyone, this is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today we are going to learn about TurboSmooth, which is very, very cool subject. As I told you from before, I'm very excited about this because uh, this is the one uh, that will help you create organic models, which are the key uh, in modeling uh, in 3ds Max. Uh, first, let's uh, tr uh, learn uh, what it does, uh, how to control it. Then I'm going to create, uh, try to create an organic shape uh, like this chair in here. Don't worry, we are going to create three or more, maybe even four um, different shapes with this and I'm going to gradually make them more difficult. Uh, so I chose this because it's a little bit easier to model and also it has these uh, organic things that we couldn't do uh, without TurboSmooth. So uh, I guess this is a good example or good exercise. Uh, but first let's uh, learn what it does and how to control it. Now create, let's create a box. The dimensions doesn't matter right now, so let's just create it and see uh, what happens uh, when we apply a turbo smooth to it. I'm going to hit 7 and uh, as I told you before, uh, this shortcut helps you see the polygon count in the scene. So this uh, first number in here are the number of polygons, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and also we uh, it counts as two faces, so two, uh, hence 12. This is uh, the total polygon count in our scene right now. Okay, this is the count of uh, quads or polygons in the scene. Now, if I apply a turbo smooth on top, you will see that the number increased uh, or multiplied by four, which is 48 right now. And also, yeah, really, the faces uh, are also divided to four uh, faces or polygons. Now, let's uh, disable uh, the turbo smooth, and you can see that we did have this one face on the top and when I add turbo smooth uh, it divides that surface to four surfaces and you can see that it uh, got a little bit um, softer I guess if I hit F4 uh, if I just zoom out uh, enough you you would see this as a drop or a s spherical shape of course if I zoom in again you know that this is not a spherical shape uh, but uh, if I increase the iterations which I will do in a minute uh, in a second you will see that the polygon count will rise and also the smoothness will increase or it will be more smooth, let's say. Uh, I will increase the iterations and you can see that again, it's multiplied by four and it looks much smoother. If I hit F4, you can see that this looks more like a, uh, it's not a sp sphere, it's an oval shape, but uh, let's say a spherical shape uh, for the um, def definition purposes, I guess. And let's increase one more and one more and one more and you can see that it uh, slowly uh, goes to a perfect smooth shape but the uh, polygon count has increased a lot okay this looks like an egg i guess yeah uh, so let me explain what this does a actually the weird thing here was the uh, is that the base model was a box and the final model is an egg uh, it's not exactly a box it's not a rounded cornered box or anything it's not a smooth box it's an egg uh, the reason for this is Turbo Smooth works like this. I'm going to draw this uh, out for you. Let's create a new Photoshop file document. Uh, let's draw that box uh, from the front view, which should look something like this. We, sh we should see a rectangle or a square, whatever. Now, when you add a Turbo Smooth to an object like this, let's create a new layer and grab a different color uh, I want to explain this nice and <laughs> tidy for you guys uh, for you now uh, if you add a turbo smooth to this what max does is it breaks this vertex and it breaks this vertex and then it let's input four vertices all uh, in every corners uh, it brings the broken vertices closer together this uh, the one of the broken vertices will move down the other one will move up, this will move left and this one will move right, down and up again and you get my point. <laughs> and what the final result will be is it will create, because it will create two vertices from this vertex, uh, the final result will be multiplied by four vertices because we also have one more dimension uh, in the scene, right? Uh, it's going uh, backwards and front as well. Uh, but let's uh, think of this in 2D uh, right now. It will be uh, easier to understand. 
Uh, now, because this uh, vertex will come here, this vertex will go here, the final result should look something like this. Let me draw this out for you. And I'm not going to draw the bottom side, but you, you see that it goes uh, to a circular or half a circle shape, right? If you break these again, apply another turbo smooth. Let's add another layer and change the color again. Make the brush a little bit thinner. Now, if you break this again, then this vertex will again be uh, broken to pieces and these will uh, be again approximating each other. And this way it will look even more smooth like this. Sorry. And you, I guess you get my point. It closes to a, or it gets closer to a circle shape. I guess uh, I couldn't draw this side, but whatever, you get my point. So each time you apply a turbo smooth, you lose a little bit volume, but you also add smoothness to the object. Now, okay, I, I guess this is clear enough, but what happens, what we should do if we want to create a, box shape with grounded edges, for example. If I have a, this box again, I don't want this to go to a circle. I want this to go to a corner, a smooth edge box, for example, okay? If you wanna do that, then you should add new segment in here. And if you do that, if you add a new segment in here, you will see that once you smooth this, this vertex will go here, this vertex will come here, and then this edge will be like this. Uh, sorry, let me make this a little bit thinner. and also red was more visible on black. Uh, this would smooth right like this, and this would smooth like this, and the final result will look something like this, okay? So this will be uh, flat. So if you add new segments to uh, squeeze the shape, or squash the shape, whatever, uh, then you will end up with a more controlled shape uh, end result. So let's delete Turbo Smooth, Add and Edit Poly. So this is the reason I've shown Turbo Smooth after Edit Poly because they, they will work very well together. You will see that in a minute. Now, if I add, uh, add and Edit Poly, let's hit two, he select one of these uh, edges and hit Control, uh, Alt R, sorry, to ring it. Then I'm going to add Connect with two edges, edge loops. You can see that we have this um, new segment edge loop in here. And when I add a turbo smooth on top of this, you can see that even though some corners are rounded, this edge in here is not rounded. The reason for that is the, uh, the reason for other corners to be rounded is we need to squish these edges as well, right? Because right now, uh, the theoretical uh, knowledge we just learned was this vertex will be broken and it will meet this one in the middle, right? This and this meets here but this and this meets in here so it will be a circle shape in here so if we want to fix that we want to go to edit poly hit 2 to, for the edge selection alt r connect and select this edge alt r connect and in the end you will see that oh, I, I hate the uh, selection brackets uh, just a second Uh, if you want to get rid of these brackets, selection brackets, these corner brackets, you go to Edit Faces, Per View Preferences, and then just disable the selection brackets. I hate it. Okay, whatever. Uh, if I now add a Turbo Smooth, you can see that we have a more organic shape, uh, a, a, but it's also controlled. The shape is still a box. It's not a sphere. It's not an egg. It's a box. Okay? So these uh, base theoretical knowledge is let's keep these in mind and try to create a model like this. Okay, first draw some <coughs> basic shapes. Uh, I'm going to create a box. Uh, I will set the dimensions to four, uh, 45. 
uh, for the height as well and for the width I'm going to input 48 and let's change this to 53 okay this is let's say this is a basic uh, dimension the basic dimensions for a chair uh, the of course it's up to this point in here this is where the uh, people will sit right this uh, area this plane in here and I, I can just right click or go to object properties and you can choose the, uh, the to display this as a box and even you can freeze this because we will use all this only as a reference and you can see that we have this wireframe box in here which will help us uh, understand the dimensions the, the general dimensions of what we are trying to model now to create these legs uh, I'm going to use planes and edge extrusion uh, actually for the whole model I'm going to use that I'm going to use a plane hit F to go to the front view and create a basic plane uh, let's decrease the segments to one by one and let's change the segments to 10 by 2 uh, let's move this here add and edit poly I'm going to hit one and select these uh, vertices move them in a little bit actually let's go all the way up and I'm going to move this to the front view uh, we have a we have our first leg like this okay I'm going to hit two select this edge in here and I'm going to bring this up holding shift I'm going to bring this up and uh, again and again, then I'll pull this to back I guess I'm going to hit one and choose all these and move this back as well uh, I'm first thing I'm doing is I'm just not trying to think about turbo smooth face I'm all, only trying to make this shape look like this one in here okay so uh, I see that this comes bent uh, up to this point but uh, after here is straight so I'm it looks a little bit ugly so I'm going to add that continuous bending now I'm going to hit two again and just select this edge and hold shift and move bring this in as well then I'm going to add symmetry modifiers to this uh, let's uh, hit one and move this symmetry uh, mirror or symmetry center to the origin I'm going to flip this I'm going to copy this and paste it again and I'm going to change the uh, direction to Z and flip it again uh, let's um, hit two and move this in a little bit more I'm going to use show and result to see uh, if it uh, joins in the middle okay now now that I uh, look at this again um, I think I should uh, make this a, a little bit thinner yeah okay this looks good now to add this uh, some thickness I can use the shell modifier which we are going to talk about these uh, parametrical modifiers but uh, for now you, it's pretty easy to use by the way you just add shell and change the inner amount to one and outer amount to zero uh, actually let's change the inner, inner amount to 1.5 and you can see that we right away have this uh, type of thing now uh, the problem uh, you can see the problem in here and also you know that uh, now you know that TurboSmooth uh, solves this problem so let's add a TurboSmooth on top uh, something weird is going to happen but don't worry we, we, I'm going to show you how to fix that when I add TurboSmooth yeah it fixes this smoothing problem in here I have increased some uh, I've uh, input three iterations by the way but also it creates these weird behaviors and also the uh, cross section of the leg has changed to a circle circular shape again but we know we are not panicking because we know how to solve this right now first thing uh, I want to recommend you is to add the shell after turbo smooth let's hide the shell and you will see that if we didn't have any shell uh, when we add turbo smooth it would only smooth the planner surfaces right which will which will uh, be uh, very handy because after that if we add the shell I'm going to move that up uh, above turbo smooth and then enable it you can see that we have uh, sharp corners which is uh, what we want uh, but let's uh, decrease the inner amount to one because we have some um, artifacts in here uh, maybe we could add 0.5 to the top in here this is very cool but also uh, we we didn't solve this problem in here because these are wooden pieces these type of things are very hard to manufacture and it's, it's not really 
uh, it shouldn't be like this. It should be it should uh, meet a little bit sharper, I guess, on the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Edit Poly, uh, close the Show End Result button, and we know that if this vertex in here is turbo smoothed, it will go to this direction and meet this vertex in here. So I should add a squeeze vertex uh, at this uh, squeeze edge uh, at this edge in here. So I'm going to hit two. I'm going to select this. Hit Alt R to make a ring selection and connect, and then you can just uh, you can just create create a new edge in here. Uh, by the way, let's delete this, and I I want to show you a faster way to this. As I told you, I really like these ribbon commands in here, and under modeling, if you're in a pulley, there's a really cool tool uh, called Swift Loop. And I also have a shortcut for this. Uh, I guess Max has a shortcut for this. It's uh, Alt 1. Uh, Alt, uh, you need to hold the Alt button uh, in the keyboard and hit the 1 uh, button in the keyboard. And this will uh, help you add a, a vertex, uh, sorry, edge loop with just one click. And it's very cool. You don't need to go to edge mode, ring, connect. But this is very uh, easy and fast way to do this. If I want to add a loop in here, for example, I'm going to hit Alt-1 and just click here. And you can see that right away we have this. And also, I'm going to uh, add one edge in here as well because I don't want this to go all the way there as well. So let's see the end result. Now you can see that we have a sharper meeting in here. If you want even sharper edges, corners, you can just select this and move this in. You can see that as I move it in, it becomes sharper and sharper. Of course, you don't, uh, you shouldn't pass this uh, point in here. And let's move this in as well. As you move those in, it becomes sharper and sharper. You, you can add even one more edge in here, and it becomes even sharper. But I'm not going to worry about that that much right now. Uh, I guess you see my general point in here. And also, let's add a chamfer. On top of this, for uh, to get rid of those uh, very sharp edges, I'm going to decrease the amount, uh, increase the amount to 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Uh, let's increase the segments as well. Yeah, you can see that we have these nice beveled corners in here. Okay. And then let's uh, model the top side. I'm going to hit F for that as well. I'm going to create a plane. Uh, again, uh, I'll start with a one by one plane, and you can see that my base uh, shape for Edit Poly is a plane. I really like edge extrusion modeling technique. Uh, I use this uh, for everything. Uh, I prefer this to a box for a starting shape because it, uh, I feel like it gives me much more uh, flexibility. So, whatever, let's uh, choose this edge, hold shift, and create, bring this in. And let's hold this edge, hold shift, and bring this in as well. Now we know how to weld these two. Uh, I'm going to hit one target weld and I'm going to weld this here. Also, I want to make this straight so I can just pull it here as well. You can uh, always grab this vertex, copy the Y value and paste it here. Or there are other ways to flatten that as well. But for now, let's just use this. Now I'm going to add a symmetry modifier on top. Flip it. Hit one. Choose the mirror and uh, move the uh, mirror, uh, move the center to the uh, zero to the origin position, and then I'm going to apply a turbo smooth. And right away, you can see that we have a similar shape to uh, what what we are going for, but it's not exactly right, of course. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go back to Edit Poly and edit this uh, a little bit more. I'm going to close the show end result, and I'm going to bring this up. I use uh, this this shortcut a lot, as you can see. I'm I'm hitting Alt S to see the vertices, and as I play with them, I'm hitting Alt S again to see the end result. And I can play with these as I want. Okay, uh, I guess we need a um, flatter uh, face. Uh, in here, so I'm going to hit Alt-1 and add a 
edge loop in here and another edge loop in here and this will uh, as you can see this will make the, the chair uh, flatter but of course I don't want uh, this much of flatness uh, I guess I can choose these and play with these uh, a little bit more after this it's just a playing game you can just you will just play with the uh, positions or you, you can get rid of the undesired edges and then try to fix the shape that's all okay let's bring these back uh, I really like this example because it, uh, as you can see, it's very. We have very few vertices, and we are close to the shape we want to create. And also, it's very easy to play with, and it's very, uh, it's helpful to understand what's going on. In my opinion. Maybe add one more in here. Uh, we can uh, always go to edge, for example, edge mode and then select these edges. You don't have to always play with vertices. I really like to play with vertices because I can understand it a little bit better, I guess, with vertices. But uh, if you want to move uh, multiple uh, vertices at once, uh, selecting edges or um, faces will come handy. you can play with the shape and try to create the desired result with this yeah let's say uh, we are done with it you can play with it even more but uh, I guess I'm going to by the way you shouldn't be a perfectionist when you're doing this because uh, you will, it will take you all day to create the exactly exactly the same model when you are close enough you should just <laughs> leave it at that okay Let's uh, add a shell to this. And now I want to add uh, these uh, fillets in the corners. Uh, you can do that with, if you add an edit, other edit poly on top and just hit two, select these corners and you can add this chamfer. And you will have these rounded corners. And I guess the shell is too thick. A little bit thicker okay and also uh, we probably uh, if you want to add some realism to this uh, when you are modeling this uh, you probably want to add um, a little bit of a uh, extra shape on the edges in here uh, let me show you what I mean I'm going I'm going to have to delete this edit poly and edit again to do that uh, let's go to the base model and then select these edges I'm going to hold shift and create a new edge loop in there and you can see that when we are finished it will look much more realistic because uh, all the uh, the reason for this is uh, to actually it all, all automatically added the fillets as well because uh, when you turbo smooth and you have these uh, edges in here it smoothed those edges as well so it's <laughs> I guess it's good uh, we don't need to add but this is too deep yeah. okay it got to my nerves yep uh, okay maybe we need to play with it a little bit more but I guess this is close enough you can um, spend more time and uh, make this more perfect uh, but you I guess you see what I mean um, and you see what we are trying to achieve in here okay so sorry I was explaining this uh, outwards uh, edge in here the reason we add this is it's two there, there are two reasons first is for design purposes um, we don't want this sharp corner sharp um, plastic corner to touch uh, a human skin so we uh, do it like this and then it it makes the uh, user feel more um, 
comfortable, I guess. Uh, and think of this uh, in the on the legs. When you sit here, uh, the legs would be cut with these uh, sharp corners. Uh, we prevented that. And also, uh, this is good for um, when you get a plastic. Uh, it's good for manufacturing purposes. Like when you get a plastic out of a, a vacuum mold. If you have these kind of um, out bends, let's say outwards uh, bends, uh, it will be easier to cut it uh, with a mill. Uh, with a four axis or five axis mill, so it has uh, uh, a couple purposes. But designing stuff is a little bit um, weird like this. You should know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, different uh, things, like how does this get getting manufactured, and you need to know a little bit more human interaction, ergonomics, a lot of things. I'm going to talk about those uh, in other examples as well. So I hope this was fun and useful. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you find it fun and useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.